Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but instead on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these, one of the least of these commandments, and teaches others to do the same, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Hello everyone, I'm Lizzie. I'm on the worship team of the LYO, the Lupin Youth Organization of Delaware and Maryland. So there's a bunch of high schoolers, about 80, from everywhere in Delaware, Maryland, and we come together in this big organization, and we plan retreats, uh, we learn about leadership, we do service projects, we do all kinds of things as a big community, and we just came back a few weeks ago from our high school retreat road trip. These are the shirts that we have. Um, I'm Hallie, I'm from the music team of Hill. And I'm Marley from Surf Snatch. As we said, um, our theme of our retreat was, can I ask that? And the moral of that statement is yes, you can ask that. Um, and a little background about this theme is that we all have questions. We have questions about God, about faith, about our lives, about our experiences. And some of these questions we may not be able to ask in certain communities. We may not feel comfortable asking in our churches, at home, or with certain friends. So we're just going to take some of these questions that we have and just discuss them a little bit. So our first question is, why does God let bad things happen to good people? If God loves us so much and forgives all of our sins, does hell exist? And are there people there? And what is God? Is God a man? Is God a woman? Does God even have gender? So for our first question, why does God let bad things happen to good people? No one knows the answer to that. I can say with full confidence, I have no idea why bad things happen to good people. I don't think God wants us to suffer. I don't think God plans for us to have bad things happen to us. I don't think that God wants to test us by giving us bad things. I don't think that bad, uh, good things can even come out of bad things, but I don't think God wants us to suffer. God's plan for us doesn't involve suffering through testing us. Um, I don't understand that at all. I will never know why good things happen to bad people, and it's a very hard struggle, because we believe in all love in God, who is so powerful, who created the universe and everything in it. How can, why, why, why do bad things still happen to us? And I don't think we can ever explain that. Um, along with this comes more questions, and that's what happens with questions. Questions brought more questions. And with this, it comes with a lot of like card stacking. How is it this all-loving God can create these beautiful lives for many of us where we're so blessed with clothing, food, shelter, and the necessities we need for life while others are not as fortunate and how, how can that be part of a plan? How can that be explained? We can't really, it's hard to fathom how an all-loving God could create that. And along with that, is there a plan? Are our lives already planned out? Does he know what's gonna happen? Does he plan these bad things? It's hard to think that he could or would. What comes into question the most is, does God plan for natural disasters and things such as that? And these questions, we may not have the answers, but we can help. At these events, we also do service projects. And this year, we put together uh, school kits 
so that those that are in underdeveloped countries can receive an education. Um, you need school um, supplies in order to go to school and learn. And we also made quilts to give to those um, to use the shelter and to use to keep warm in these areas. So another question. If God loves us so much and forgives all of our sins, is there a hell? So as Lutherans, um, most of us believe that we are saved by grace, that we are completely and utterly saved. God's love is so powerful, just as the cross was so powerful, that we are completely saved by grace. So if we believe that, we have to be okay with the fact that if we die and we go back to God, sitting right next to us is a person we hate more than anyone else in the entire world. The last person we would ever imagine coming to God would be right next to you. We have to be okay with that. And it's such a hard concept to imagine. If, we, if God is so loving and so powerful, how can God just let someone do that? How can God just put us all together? And we can't understand that because we don't have the good love that God does. God's love is so powerful, so powerful and unimaginable that beyond anything, that can happen and that can make sense. There's not much to add to that. Lizzie basically covered it. <laughs> But um, to tie this along with Road Trip and what we did at Road Trip, um, as LYO members, we also participated in small groups with all the other high school participants. And especially in my small group and other small groups apparently discussed the same person. Um, we discussed the topic of, just like Lizzie said, with grace, that would mean that this all-loving God forgives everybody, and that includes people like Hitler. And that is something that was very hard for us to understand and accept, um, but that's something that comes along with grace. And as as you follow, as you follow Christ, and that's just something. It's very hard. It's a hard concept for us to whoo, wrap our head wrap our head around. But that's something that we discussed, and that's possible. But we do not have the answer. So, one of the questions about God. Is God a woman, a man? Is God genderless? What does that mean? So, if we look at scripture, um, and we see the first book, Genesis, we see that we are created in God's image. What does that mean? How, what does that mean being created in God's image? Does that mean God is a humanoid person? Does that mean God has arms and legs? Does that mean God has a heart? Does that mean God eats food? Does that mean God sleeps? What does that mean? Um, and again, Paul says that there is no man or woman, we're all one in Christ. What does that mean? I mean, I'm pretty sure if there's men and women in the world. Um, so, this is a very difficult question for all of us to talk about, I and mean, we don't know what God is. Um, but I don't think God has a gender, I don't think God needs one. God is so powerful. God created the entire universe before anything like that ever existed. I think gender is a very human concept, and a very human, binary thing, and I don't think God is going to be constrained by that. And with this question does bring great controversy. I mean, we don't know. Um, but as people of different faiths and as people of the same faith, everybody believes and sees what's best fit their faith. So if you have to imagine God a certain way, then some people might imagine God with a gender. Some people might not. It's whatever makes you feel comfortable in your faith. Like Lizzie said and like Marley said, um, Personally, I believe that God is this all-loving being, and like Lizzie said, to add, um, gender and classifications are very human boundaries and walls that we set up for ourselves, but I don't think that's our place to force God into those boundaries that are very human and earthly things. And if women didn't preach, we wouldn't have heard the good news of Jesus being resurrected. <laughs> So questions are not the opposite of faith. Questions are part of our dynamic and engaged faith. They help to drive and shape our faith, helping us to grow and learn. We're all Lutheran. If Martin Luther didn't ask the questions about the Catholic Church, we wouldn't be here. There wouldn't be Lutheranism. There wouldn't be the Protestant Reformation. We need questions to grow. Questions are best when we wrestle them as a community. And not all questions have answers or just one answer, and that's also OK. We don't know everything. And that can be uncomfortable and difficult. When we talk through things together, we might figure a few things out, or we might get more questions, and that's also okay. 
the conversation always continues. So like our gospel, we are set an example. We are told we are the light of the world, uh, uh, not to cover it with a, book, uh, a basket on a hill. And in our first reading, we are told to share bread with the hungry, bring the homeless poor into the house, and cover the naked. But not for our own salvation. We don't do that just so we can, just could God, God could love us more, just so we have a better chance of getting to heaven. We do it for the benefit of others, and we do it to set an example for others, so that they can see what is good, and they can see what is right to do. We don't do good things that Jesus tells us to do, Jesus came down to tell us to do it for ourselves, do it for others. So, with our last question, how do we know God is real? Okay. <laughs> this question, I am standing here and telling you God is real. I'm standing here and telling you that I wholeheartedly believe that. Um, but if you were to ask, if actually, okay. <laughs> Go back a year, and this was one of my exact questions that if I had gone to road trip or if this was the theme for our youth events last year, I would have asked this exact question. I toyed and battled with this idea for a long time and I had so many doubts, but ultimately I'm standing right here, this year, right now, saying God is real, and that has come from a year of growth and development personally, and also as if I needed any more reassurance at Road Trip, we had Pastor Sarah, she was our chaplain, and she stood right up there and told us that if we had any doubts to believe that God is as real as her standing up there and telling all of us that God is real. And if I can take anything from her and use it on everybody here, God is real and God is as, God is as real as me standing right here telling you that. So lastly, we'd like to close out by just saying, don't ever let your questions hold you back or keep you from expressing your faith. Remember you're loved and you're saved by God, especially through the questions you have. Let them deepen, and your, deepen your strength and belief. Remain faithful. Reach out with your questions. Remember that no matter what, the church will always be a safe and brave space for you. You're safe within your grace. Amen.